So part one of DC Fandom has come and gone. Today I'm counting down my most anticipated DC movies. What is up comic book movie fans? Welcome back to my channel. So there are seven DC movies coming to theaters over the next couple of years. And today I'm counting them down from my least anticipated, even though I'm kind of looking forward to all of them, to my most anticipated. Now, if you guys disagree, please leave your lists down below. If you enjoy these countdowns and you're a fan of DC, be sure to smash that thumbs up button. I do want to start out with this, though. A lot of people are going to be asking, Austin, where's the Snyder Cut? So I have a few reasons for not including this. One, I made this list on Letterboxd, and it's not on there. Two, it is uh, an HBO Max film split into four separate parts, so it's almost episodic. It's also four hours, and it's a completely different version of a movie that we have seen before. So all of those reasons combined, and the fact that I kind of wanted to focus on the theatrically released movies, I didn't put it on my list. Now, I'm not saying don't put it on your list. If you guys are really looking forward to that, as I am, I... I'm in the camp of those that enjoyed the trailer that we got at DC Fandome, but I'm just going to focus on the films we're getting in theaters, starting with number seven. And coming in at the bottom is Aquaman 2, the return of James Wan, Jason Momoa, and Patrick Wilson, who they announced at DC Fandome is returning as Ocean Master, but that's pretty much the only new piece of information that we got. So my anticipation for these movies, a lot of it spawns from the news that we got from DC Fandome and the trailers that we got. Aquaman 2, unfortunately, it just didn't get much. Now, again, even though it's at the bottom of my list, Still looking forward to it. I um, enjoyed the first Aquaman. It may not be the best of the DC movies, but uh, I think it will end up being at least fresh and something different. And I'm a huge James Wan fan, but we just don't know anything about this movie. Therefore, it's at the bottom of my list. Now, this one was tough. It was really tough to put it at number six because I think this film could be awesome. I'm a huge fan of the first Shazam movie. I thought it was a nice balance of different aspects that we've gotten from superhero films before. Had a great sense of humor. I think it is the perfect movie for families, even though it goes a little bit darker. And I think Shazam 2, Fury of the Gods, will go even darker than that. And I think we're kind of uh, paving the way to bring in a Black Adam into this universe and have those two kind of fight each other in a future film. But along the same lines as Aquaman, all we know now, well, the Sinbad thing, now we got DC fan but all we know now is kind of the title of the movie. Don't really know who the new characters are. We have a tease of who the villain is from the after credits scene, but in terms of casting, we're not for sure. And again, just kind of rocking the bottom of my list because all we know is the title. Now, I love Zachary Levi, and I think in terms of quality, this could be um, higher up on this list once I see it. But Shazam 2 Fury of the Gods comes in at number six because I just want to know more about it. Okay, again, uh, number five seems low. Uh, Wonder Woman 1984, I can't wait. Listen, I am pumped for this film. But there's something about these movies getting pushed back and then pushed back again that just, it's really taken the air out of my tires. I'm just like, ah, oh, all right, well, Wonder Woman, it was coming, then it's not coming, then it's coming again. And at this point, I'm really looking forward to it. I have liked everything we've seen in the trailers. I'm curious to see how Cheetah plays out on the big screen. And the return of Chris Pine pumps me up as a fan of the first, as a huge fan of the first movie. But you look at all of these movies that haven't been pushed back multiple times and the fact that there's still this mystery for them going in. And a lot of them are new characters that we've never seen before and bringing in old characters. And I'll get into that. But in terms of Wonder Woman 1984, we do kind of know what's in store for us, which is good, and it's so close at this point, I'm just kind of ready to see it, and I can't quite put it above these other ones. Um, but again, like I said for Shazam, uh, this could end up being one of the best movies we've seen in the DC Universe so far, and Gal Gadot, Wonder Woman, she, she's the best. Coming in at number four, Black Adam. I'm curious, A, to see what the tone of this film is. I think it could be... Uh, really dark. I mean, you have The Rock, and he appeals to families and all of this stuff, but you're also bringing in, you know, the JSA, the Justice Society of America, and these characters like a Dr. Fate, and a Hawkman, and even an Atom Smasher. Noah Centineo Austin? Really? Listen, I think he could 
end up surprising a lot of people, and I think this movie could do a ton for Dwayne Johnson, a man who has it all at this point, but what he doesn't have is a superhero slash villain role under his belt that he just crushed, and he's been building hype for this for so long. At this point, I'm just like kind of salivating. I'm like, I want to see this movie ASAP. I want to see how they incorporate the Justice Society, what the actual plot is, and how eventually that ties into Shazam. So I think Black Adam could be super cool, and Dwayne Johnson's threat saying, listen, I'm coming for all of the other heroes in the DC Universe. I believe them. I think this movie could be really cool. I never, you would ask me 10 years ago, I said, we're never going to see Flashpoint on the big screen. What? This is such a cool story, and I know a lot of people aren't thrilled about Ezra Miller. I've seen a lot of that in the comments section, but even if we look past that and look at the fact that we have Michael Keaton <laughs> returning to the big screen, guys. Michael Keaton's Batman. That is so cool. Oh, hey, Ben Affleck. I mean, how does this not end up in my top three? Because two of my favorite interpretations of Batman are returning. You have Flashpoint, which is an unreal storyline. If they semi-use the storyline that we've gotten, say, I don't know, in the animated movie, it could be one of the more emotional scenes we've ever seen with a Batman. And I'm curious, though, how are they going to go about the casting of Reverse... Flash. I think that's the big question. Now, we didn't get a ton revealed at DC Fandom, but we got a lot revealed before that with Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck and uh, the suit and that concept art, which I thought was so sweet, guys. I think this could be a really special movie, kind of the live-action Spider-Verse uh, that we got for Marvel, bringing that into DC, and we will get more characters announced in the future I'm pretty excited for this. Now, other than Wonder Woman, which we've seen before, there were three movies that got footage shown at DC Fandom. Uh, one was the Snyder Cut, which uh, impressed me because it's footage that I've never seen before. The other, well, there's two, but the other that we're going to talk about right now is the Suicide Squad. This behind-the-scenes footage uh, and the fact that we now know who all of these characters are and who everyone is playing and who not to get attached to, or maybe we should get attached to them, I don't know. I mean, they could kill off characters from the first film. They could kill off a Rick Flagg or a Captain Boomerang, or they could kill off like a Javelin or a Weasel. I love the fact that we got John Cena in this movie as like a douchey Captain America. But the best part about this footage for me uh, was one, James Gunn's passion behind it, saying, this is the coolest movie I've ever done. The guy who did Guardians of the Galaxy? Okay. And two, the fact that the tone tells me that it's most likely going to be rated R, and it's like this war movie. I was seeing Apocalypse Now comparisons, like this World War II-esque superhero film where it looked like you had our villains going up against an army of sorts. I mean, this is cool, guys. I did not expect this at all. It's a complete 180 from what we saw uh, in that first Suicide Squad movie, even though we have some of the same characters, and it looks colorful, it looks fun, we have King Shark, live action, Weasel, I mean, guys, this could be, it is by far the biggest surprise at DC Fandom for me, just because we had no clue what it was about, but now we know it is so different from anything we've seen in the DC Universe, and I can't wait for that first trailer, I am hyped out of my mind for the Suicide Squad and I didn't think that was going to be the case. And of course, number one, it is Condiment King. So happy we have Steven Spielberg directing this film, starring Leonardo DiCaprio. Condiment King is a fantastic character. Just kidding. It's the Batman. We all know it was the Batman. Uh, this trailer just blew up and blew everyone's minds. I think uh, it, it did kind of convert a lot of people who were hating on Robert Pattinson. And even though... I've been trying to hype him up for the last couple of months. I understand why some were afraid, because what is he most well-known for? It's the sparkly vampire in Twilight, and I know that gives a lot of people hesitation, but there's so many great performances that I think many have missed out on. I'm sure a lot of you have watched movies like Good Time and The Lighthouse. Oh my gosh, guys, he's just such a great performer coming out in a movie like Tenet, and now you have the Batman. And just hearing that one line... 
I'm vengeance. And seeing the scene that I think everyone and their grandmothers are talking about, uh, seeing what Matt Reeves is going to do in terms of action, and showcasing the beginning of a lot of these villains like the Catwoman and the Penguin. And if you watched my video yesterday talking all about the Riddler, I think the Riddler could be one of the best Batman villains we've seen so far, especially because you have Paul Dano playing. I mean, you have the talent, you have everything you need to create an awesome Batman movie. And that really dark and gritty tone and the fact that a lot of people are still speculating this could be rated R. Now, I still, part of me wants to say no, but there's a chance, guys. And there's a chance that Batman, or the Batman, comes out and really blows a lot of people away. I am just so excited. I mean, I'll do my most anticipated for 2021 at the end of the year, but come on. I'm kind of spoiling myself now. This movie has me insanely excited, and I think Robert Pattinson is going to crush as the Batman. And they've only filmed 30% of the movie. So that was a trailer for 30% of the film. I can't wait to see what we get next. And I'm sure Matt Reeves will take some of the things that he's heard and maybe incorporate it into the film and bring us something even better than we would have gotten in the first place. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Were you hyped this weekend for DC Fandom? Are you looking forward to all of these movies? And I would love to see your lists down below. If you want more lists like this, most anticipated videos, countdowns, be sure to smash that thumbs up button. I'd love to do it. Appreciate you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys leave those comments down below. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to go watch the Batman trailer again because that is my life now.